Final Cut Pro 11.1 .1 just dropped yesterday, and I think there's some features that you're really going to like. Now, the first thing that you want to do when there's a new version of Final Cut Pro out is you want to back up the current version that you have. Okay, so the way that we back up Final Cut Pro is you go into your Applications folder here, and you're going to scroll down and look for Final Cut Pro in the Applications folder, and then you're going to right-click on that and go to Compress Final Cut Pro. And so what that's going to do, it's going to create a zip file of the actual application, and at any point, if you have a project or something that's not compatible with the new version, you can actually unzip this and use the old version to work on that if you need to. So it's just a good way to have a backup of the old version in case something Something goes wrong with this new version. Now after we've backed up Final Cut Pro, now we want to go and update it to the latest version. Now to update Final Cut Pro, you're going to want to open up your App Store and then click on the Updates tab down here, and then in there you'll find Final Cut Pro, and then you just click on Update, and that will actually go through the process of updating Final Cut Pro for you. And now that we have the latest version of Final Cut Pro, let's dive in and look at the new features. After you open up Final Cut Pro after the first update, you will notice this splash screen here that's gonna kinda give you a breakdown of what's new. And if you click on the complete feature list, that will take you out here to the Final Cut Pro user guide where you can actually look to see what's actually new in 11.1 .1, and you can kind of read through and understand all the different features. Now, whenever there are major updates like this, if you try to open up an existing library, it's going to tell you that the library needs to be updated for this version of Final Cut Pro. So this is another good reason why you should back up projects. So make sure that you back up some of the projects that you have. If you're not sure if the new version of Final Cut Pro is going to cause an issue or not for you, then always back up your existing libraries and make sure that you're just kind of using a copy of them to update them to see if everything works. Okay, so here in Final Cut Pro, I've just got a new library created here, and I just have a video clip here that I'm just going to throw in that we can kind of play around with and show the new features. The first new feature in 11.1 .1 is something so remarkable and so new that you are not going to believe this. Are you ready? It's adjustment layer. All kidding aside, we've had adjustment layers for a long time through third-party plugin makers and things like that. I even have an adjustment layer on my website. And while it's really awesome that you have been downloading all of the free adjustment layers from all of us different content creators out there, the reality is, now that this is native, it's actually so much better. And there's some actually pretty cool perks that come along with this. And I called them adjustment layers just a second ago, but in reality, in Final Cut Pro 11.1, .1, they're called adjustment clips. And you're most certainly asking yourself, why did it take 25 years to get adjustment layers in Final Cut Pro? No idea. Now, typically with old adjustment layers, like for example, the adjustment layers that you would find from third-party developers, like for example, mine here, it's just a title plugin that you would actually drag on top of everything and you can do your adjustment layers there. But the new adjustment clips are not actually titles. Now to add an adjustment clip, you're gonna go up to edit and you're gonna go down to add adjustment clip. And what that will do is it will basically drop this layer on top that you can now do whatever you want with just like you could with any other adjustment layer before. Okay, and fun fact, I still have an Intel Mac and I don't know if this is just a bug, but there's supposed to be a shortcut key for opening up an actual adjustment clip and the shortcut key is supposed to be option A. However, when I do option A, all I get is a little beep because nothing happens. So I know that this works on other people's M series Macs because I've seen the videos. I know that this actual shortcut works and for whatever reason, the shortcut key is not working on my Mac. So we can actually alleviate this by doing command option K and that will open up our command editor and then we can search for adjustment clip like that. And then if you click on add adjustment clip and then you just do the command keys that you want, we can actually set those. So I'm going to do option A there. And so now hitting option A should add the adjustment clip for me. In most cases, you won't have to do this step, but for some reason, that actual shortcut key is not working on my Mac. Now, I might be missing something, so if you know why this is not happening on my Intel Mac, then please leave a comment down below, but it wasn't working. But now, if I do option A, now it adds an adjustment clip like I want. 
And the adjustment clips work just like any other adjustment layer would have before. So we could open up any of these effects and let's go down to like nostalgia here and let's just drop the security on there. Now you can see that the security effect is actually being applied over top of the video. And if we were to go off of the adjustment clip, then it's not there. So it's working just like it has on any other. The nice thing about this is that we can also apply transitions to these layers. So like if I were to go down here and we were just gonna do like a divide here, if I wanted to drop that transition onto here, if we start at the beginning, you can see that the actual effect isn't being applied, but the transition allows that to happen. So now you can actually like play with transitions a little bit when you want to apply effects or colors or anything like that via an actual adjustment clip. So I think that that's a really cool addition and I think people are gonna get a lot of use out of that. Again, there's a million different third-party adjustment layers out there that people have been using. I think that having this native in Final Cut Pro and being able to apply transitions and things to it it is just making it that much better. So personally, I can't be angry that it's basically wiping out the need for my adjustment layer. I'm just happy to have this as part of Final Cut Pro now. And it wouldn't be a Final Cut update without some magnetic mask updates. So we got some quality of life updates, we got some performance updates, and we got some stability updates. And in Final Cut Pro, we've been able to add a magnetic mask by doing Control Option M, and that would actually add a magnetic mask to our scene. And I'm just gonna select the magnetic mask really quick. And performance wise, this already seems to be a little bit better. So I'm gonna actually just hold down Option and get rid of that, because I only want that part of the car. And I'm gonna select the door of the car like that. And then I'm just gonna analyze it and let's see how this does. And so that's typically the process. I'm not gonna actually render the whole thing out or analyze the whole thing, but I just wanna show you that was basically the process. Performance wise, I mean, for me, it's not gonna be super fast because I'm on this Intel Mac, but a lot of people I've seen in the performance does definitely seem to be a lot better. Now, something to note here, in previous versions of Final Cut Pro, when you would delete the magnetic mask, this magnetic mask editor over here would stay open. But now, when you delete that mask, the editor closes here, and I think that's just kind of a nice little addition. It basically removes a step of something you'll have to do. But if you ever wanna see that again, now there's a shortcut key to be able to do Control Option M, and then you can actually show the magnetic mask editor there. And if you do Control Option M again, you can hide it. So that nice little shortcut key addition is just a nice addition in Final Cut Pro. Another cool addition in version 11.1 .1 is an audio effect called the Quantec Room Simulator. The Quantec Room Simulator! Which is probably just a fancy way to say reverb generator because in reality that's kind of what it does, but ultimately it's an effect that allows you to make it sound like your video was recorded in different types of environments. Now to show you this next new feature, I've loaded up a video here that just has some audio in it that I can give you an example. And I'm gonna show you this Quantec Room Simulator effect. So if you go down to your audio effects and you click on spaces, you'll find this Quantec Room Simulator here. And if we drop that onto our clip now, you can hear if I play this project. And actually for me, I think it makes more sense to rename this, so I'm going to that is actually the default setting. So if we go over here to our settings and then we open this up, we now get a dialogue that gives us all of the different options here in the Quantec Room Simulator. And basically, I want you to think about this as a way for us to be able to make it sound like our videos recorded in different environments. And you can go up here to the different presets and let's say I wanna choose a large room like Fantasia, that's kind of an interesting name. And if we hit play, so I'm gonna rename projects to timelines like that. And you can see that it ultimately makes the room seem bigger. Now there's a million different presets in here. You can kind of go through all of the different ones and play around with them. I'm not gonna show you every single one, obviously, but this is just a really cool way to be able to add some more depth and some more structure to the sound of your audio. You can choose between little rooms or big rooms or kind of more, intimate rooms. There's a lot of different options here, so it's definitely cool and something you should play around with for sure. This feature was actually introduced in Logic Pro, but now it's been brought over to Final Cut Pro, and I think it's a welcome addition as it adds a little bit more options to your audio editing. And while we're on the subject of effects, now you can actually go in and rename your audio effects to whatever you want. So if you wanna call this Room Simulator, like that, 
you could just rename it there. It's not going to actually rename the effect itself, but in your actual inspector over here, it allows you to kind of have more control over how you name things in your inspector. In previous updates, we were able to rename video effects, and now we can rename audio effects as well. Now this next update almost made me cry. Let me get real with you for a second. Whenever I do the editing of my YouTube videos, I use markers to actually block off the parts that I'm going to keep and that I'm going to get rid of. Okay, so markers to me are ultimately a super valuable way for me to actually keep track of what I'm going to keep and what I'm going to get rid of. And I will actually show you this in a video that I'm going to publish tomorrow that's going to be all about how I edit YouTube videos. However, one of the most annoying things on the planet is that you could not move the marker. When you put a marker on a clip, it was there and it was stuck in place. And intuitively, you would always say to yourself as you're editing and you're using markers, you would just intuitively say, I'm just going to click on that and I'm going to move it down. And Final Cut was all like, no, dog, you ain't going to do that. You ain't going to move my marker. I'm happy to announce that you can move markers now. Yeah, you can move markers now. It is the dumbest thing I've ever heard of that you couldn't move markers. It was in fact the most annoying thing, the bane of my existence when editing, but you can move markers now and I shouldn't be this happy about it. So all you have to do is you go in and you create a marker and we do that by hitting the M key. And if you hit the M key once, it's just gonna create a standard marker. But if you hit the M key twice, it brings up this marker dialogue and it allows you to choose which type of marker you want here. This has always been the case. This is not that, this is not new, but we can choose whatever kind of marker we want, hit done. But now the new thing here is that you can actually click on the marker and move it around. This was not available prior to this moment. So this is a huge update for me. And I know it's silly and I know it's insane, but this is like a great thing for me. Another nice addition now is that you can reveal the actual source of multicam angles or synced clips that you have, and you can reveal that now in the browser. And the last major feature that was added in 11.1 is the image playground is now natively available in Final Cut Pro. And I've watched other people's videos about this, and I think that there's kind of mixed reviews about whether this is going to be useful or not. But my opinion, I think this is actually a huge addition. Now, before you start throwing stones at me, let me explain. I understand that Image Playground is kind of in its infancy and it's pretty limited in the features that it has right now. I want you to think long term about this because AI generated content is not going away. It is only going to get better. It's only going to grow. It's only going to become more of an integral part of the actual content creation process. So the fact that Apple is now including Image Playground within Final Cut Pro tells me that they're very interested in integrating AI in a meaningful way across the entire platform. To me, that's a huge step. Now I'm totally with a lot of you out there who are like, it's not very feature rich. It's kind of dumb right now. It doesn't really have a lot to do. However, I want you to look at the possibility of it. Okay. It seems to me that Apple is heading toward integrating AI into Final Cut Pro in meaningful ways, albeit very slow and at an Apple's pace, it is definitely going to be a meaningful feature in the future to me. I suspect that the long-term implications of that will mean more things like generated video, generated content, that kind of stuff. So while it might seem insignificant now, I do believe that Image Playground being integrated into Final Cut Pro natively like this is going to be a super useful feature for content creators going forward. Now, unfortunately, because I don't have an M-Series Mac, I still have this Intel Mac, I am unable to actually use Image Playground. However, the way that you would get to Image Playground is you would click on your import button up here and then choose Image Playground from there, and then you'll be able to play around with Image Playground. On an Intel Mac, it is not available. It is only available for M-Series Mac, so that's a huge bummer for me, which also motivates me. I think it might be time to go get an M-Series Mac because at this point, I'm missing out on features and I definitely don't like that at all. So if you want to donate to the Sean Gets an M-Series Mac so that we can actually do these tutorials, then feel free to do like a super thanks in the comments down below or something like that. Or also I'll put a link in the description for buy me a coffee and you can donate to the channel that way if you want. Any support that you could offer would be greatly appreciated, but I think it's time to buy an M-Series Mac.
So that's all the major features in Final Cut Pro 11.1. There were also a lot of different bug fixes, and I'll kind of list them quickly here on the screen, but also Apple publishes the release notes for every update that happens in Final Cut Pro. I'm gonna put the link to that down in the description, but you can go to that URL and you can actually see all of the release notes and everything that was actually done in Final Cut Pro, including all of the bug fixes and support and things like that. So what do you think about this update? I would love to hear your opinion. I'd love to hear your opinion about the update itself or about Image Playground. And if you think that's gonna be a useful actual tool in the future, I would love to hear anything you have to say about this new update for Final Cut Pro. Your opinion matters to me. And I think that your opinion will help all of the other people and give other people different perspectives. Because in a world where we're very polarized and everybody kind of thinks that it's my way or the highway, I actually like to hear different perspectives. I like to hear what you have to say, what you think about things and so that we can have a meaningful conversation about this kind of stuff. As always, thanks so much for watching my videos. If you're enjoying my content, please make sure that you subscribe to the channel because it helps me grow. Make sure you like this video. Also make some comments down below because that engagement helps the channel grow as well. And also hit that notification bell so that you get notifications anytime I create a new video. And as always, thanks so much for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, you should definitely check out that.